All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for To Your Eternity, Eternity, Season 1, Episode 15. All right, so the tournament is well underway. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Fushi is doing what he can, but uh, people are not giving up even though he is immortal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People yeah. are also kind of set on him becoming their god king leader of a sort. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, because I mean, it's about time that as civilization discovers what Fushi is, that they would start to deify him. Mm -hmm. I mean, as it being uh, a, a literal unkillable entity. Right, that, which that works is, very well for yeah. their current leadership structure. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... Um, Fushi has gone through a couple transformations to deal with the tournament yep. and this berserker guy that he's facing right now. Gugu wasn't enough. No. He needed someone that was actually capable of, you know, fighting interpersonally in a way that would be useful for restraining the actual mm -hmm. uh, person. So, Perona. Yeah. Which is cool because he didn't make that strong of a connection with Perona back then. No, he didn't. So, this is maybe something where he really needs this. Right. So... And this, um, yeah. since he has only up till now taken the form of things that were dead, mm -hmm. that either means that prone is dead or that's not actually a hard limitation. Yeah. Which is interesting. I don't think it's a hard limitation. I don't think so either. Yeah. yeah it didn't, didn't make sense that it would have to be based yep. on death. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that uh, on some level, this was something where he was in a little bit of a dire, uh, straight situation. Now, mm -hmm. to be fair, he did make that connection with what the person said that reminded him of Perona, uh -huh. but that's still not a strong connection. No, so, not compared to the other ones. Yeah, so we're going to have to see where that leads to. And then, of course, we have the very not subtle uh, hintings that Hayase uh -huh. is, is back. Here. And, yeah, mm -hmm. she's okay. predating. Right, and licking. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, then come back here for the discussion. All right. Okay. okay cool. So this art continues. The tournament keeps going. Hey, if anything, um, the tournament was probably the best part of the episode in a lot of ways, other than the knocker fight at the end, because... Basically, the choice that Fushi made to try and protect the guy, that yeah, was pretty interesting. That, yep, I really it didn't liked work, how that, but, but okay. Yeah, no, but no. I liked how it spilled over into an area where he's like, oh, now I'm going to attach myself to this brother here because right. of their heartthrob story. Yep, and no. he just came off of, oh yeah, a brother that tried to protect him and died as a result of it. Hmm. Right, right. Yeah. So, but, but Tanari's point of you shouldn't necessarily just you know, get thralled in their sob story. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, she's right. In totally. That, no, Fushi, I think the point of this story right now is that you need to be able to move on. Right. In the same way that the being originally was trying to be like, you need to move on. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't stay here. Yeah. Because then you'll end up relying on people too mm -hmm. much. This arc is basically a point of how if he could, if he was fighting the knocker by himself, he wouldn't have been able to beat it. Yep. Therefore, you need to fill that middle ground of working with others, mm -hmm. sticking with a specific group of people, but also being able to move on and not be tied down to one specific group because eventually they'll die. Right. And you need to be able to continue forth and grow yep. amidst all of that. It's but, it's kind of a fun um, yeah. getting getting at maybe a, a meta thing with Fushi as a character because since he's this different entity that very much absorbs from his environment and everything, right. take the regular amount that a person would be um, defined a bit by their relationships with other people and dial it up to 10, right? Dial it up all the way, yeah. All the way, right? Yeah. So, you know, even with regular people and regular relationships, it can be important to basically take that step away to be able to figure out who you are. Right. You know, what kind of person you're going to be and all that. Yeah, and he made a point of how he was like, I want to be someone that saves and protects and yep. takes care of other people. Cool. Like, like Gugu, like like many mm -hmm. others that you've seen. That's wonderful, Fushi. Just know your limits and also know that not everyone necessarily has to be cared, protected, and, you know, all right. that by you. Because yeah. You have one, to make decisions of what you can do and what you can't do and what you will do and what you won't do. Right. And because while you are immortal, you are not omnipotent. Mm -hmm. There's a very big difference between the two. And also, just because someone is nearby you and has some kind of emotional plight to their journey mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you uh, should be uh, 
uh, attaching ourselves to them necessarily. Like, um, and he needs I, to judge the value of relationships, which exactly. I guess, I guess, by having a character that's as annoying mm -hmm. as Tanari, we get to have him Thanks realize. For reminding me what oh, her name was. Oh yeah, I don't like being around nope. you. Nope, and you have no reason to be around her. That she doesn't really add anything. There was that. There was that bit at the end that you know of of what she said to him and stuff, and that was good, right? Mm -hmm. But, but. It's tough because it's tough because, because I yeah. I generally like the um the the high energy characters that kind of like oh. that kind of like poke and prod. Oh, at I can like, tell you the exact thing that makes those characters generally different from Tanari. No, I I, I yeah. think I could too. I'm yeah. interested in in what mm -hmm. what you think of it though. But but mm. generally with those characters, the reason why I like them so much is that is because they make things happen. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. They they keep things moving. Right. They actively. Add shake energy the into the conflict, right? And Shinari is the opposite. She is the opposite. She is, the opposite. She is actively neutralizing things, yeah. right? And yeah. it is, it is, it is, it is so it is aggravating, so annoying, because, and aggravating. Because yeah. Fushi, as a character, is is uh, quiet and soft spoken and timid enough as is, and yet even he is frustrated and fed up with this whole thing and realizes he doesn't he doesn't have any reason to be interacting with her it's he doesn't a, really have much reason to be in the tournament you know yeah it's a, it's a very weird thing in a story to run the line of having your main and when i say main i mean your primary actual well, fully realized character in this story well, there is no other character other than fushi that exists in this story right that now. is still around right. that actually yep. is a like a full fleshed out right. character the, the so only that char one character the perspective yeah. uh -huh. character yeah, is it. actively annoyed like like bothered bothered by the presence of another character but the story is trying to sell the main character and by extension you the audience that no 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 no, no. you're gonna like this character why didn't you just make the character slightly different to begin with yeah there's it, there's so many things that i i, I and in the thing, actively dislike about Tanari. Yeah. and if you are wanting to go for the whole thing of hey let's see how fushi stands up for himself you know sure around someone that's aggravating yeah. that's fine but the problem is is that in yeah. this arc the one other character like yeah <laughs> At the beginning of the arc, it's great. It's like, hey, yeah, we've got we've got Pioran, and they're gonna travel together, and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. But then you take that character and you whisk them away, right? You trade them basically for another right. character. Right. You 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 do a downgrade mm -hmm. on a on a mission they didn't even intend to nope. be here, right? The reasons why they're there are contrived. Yeah. The character like, that they're with is contrived. This is like a th the this this feels like contrived. a filler arc to the max, oh, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. and it's in a, in a show like this. Yeah. In a show like this, we went from. Gugu's arc, mm -hmm. which is some of the best stuff we've had in the show thus far, yep. to the character's agency being robbed, and right. we still don't know why in the story yeah. that's really needed to happen. Nope. Like, One of the things that's very um, sometimes apparent, I would say, when uh, a story clearly doesn't have filler, like mm -hmm. this one, like this is not filler. No. Um, is that maybe it would this, do better if there if it could have filler? Well, yeah, but 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 I would say also the idea that the story is being written on a weekly or bi-weekly mm -hmm. basis and something something must have been happening i would yeah. say on the uh, it doesn't have to be but just mm -hmm. the idea that it feels to me like this is either a weird adaptation thing because this is generally how i how i kind of interpret some of these things when i'm i'm so um like jostled desynced, by yeah. desynced by the story uh -huh. is that there must be something slightly off in the adaptation or this was something that was going on weird in the release, and also generally the community agrees. No, this mm -hmm. is a weaker arc in general. Yeah. The author was, you know, trying to figure out what direction to take the story. I totally get it. The the Gugu stuff was very closed yep. circle, very similar to March's story. And that's I just don't know why you couldn't just keep doing that and make little progress on Fushi because right. Gugu's was in. It, like, amazingly different from March's yep. arc, like and those, amazingly different, but also very very separate very right? separate like like because because the, the with the with the premise of this story right one of the big things that i that i would see as being a potential like issue to look out for uh -huh. is how do you continue from arc to arc because yeah. you have to make sure that the audience is emotionally open to being invested in new characters that get brought along right when you know maybe you've been you know you're you're a core and a half into the show, right? Sure. And you're basically needing to get a whole new cast, right? Because yep. Fushi's the only one that carries over, really. You right. know, um, 
And maybe the, the, the forms are the aspect of the previous characters that carry over. Right, 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 exactly. But with this one, it's... <sighs> yeah, we were, we were already on tenuous ground with the way uh -huh. that we were brought into this arc. But right. then the content of this arc as well is not helping. Yeah, it's... So, so I, I'm really just hoping, can we move along and get to the point where we obviously are going to fight uh, Hayase? Like, right. Like, yeah. that's, that's basically what they're setting up. But I'm also really confused as to how this stuff with um, uh, Tanari and her little, like, goon squad, goons uh -huh. group, or what have you, has to do with building up towards a potential, like, encounter with Hayase. Right, like, it's what it's something... Is, yeah. I like the idea of a of a gaggle of kids that can be your sort of goonie yes, squad and everything, yes, and the emotional wonderful. core to get attached to. I, yes. I love it, right? Like, but... but the the relevance and the character that was like chosen to be the the, the forefront main, the forefront and the main mm -hmm. interaction for Fushi no like no. I'm I'm way more interested in the random brother pair mm -hmm. that was introduced for thirty seconds or whatever yep. just in this episode yeah. than I am about her right it's it's something where and I don't know we might have even talked about it in some of the previous discussions for like the episodes of this arc but there's there's this. There's this thing in writing where I think um, we talked about it a little bit. Okay, yeah, but, but the, yeah, like, but the idea that if if the, reminder, yeah. if there isn't a sense of progress, yeah. right, your audience will start to tune out, yeah. right? Because because if you think about it, any story can be shortened down to one sentence, mm -hmm. right? But it's just less satisfying of a story, right? right. So yeah. while you she goes on a journey of learning and right, um, an alien learns what it means to be human, you know, yeah. right? Like like that. There you go, right? But it's it's about you know zooming into that concept right yeah. and then and then you can have all this wonderful stuff happen that helps paint the picture right yeah. but if there isn't a sense of progress then it can just feel like nothing you know your, your time's being wasted and and then even if it gets to the point where you have some cool moment at the end where tanari is able to give some comment to fushi right, that, right. that's that's great and all yeah but but you know where where was the rest of it? Right? right. So the main bit of progress then that we're getting is we're starting to get to know a little bit about who Tanari is. Mm -hmm. We're starting to learn a little bit about why this stuff bothers Fushi so much, which it, I mean, we assume how much it should bother Fushi because how much it bothers us. Right. But we know now based on the way he's responded. But then by him getting his forms back, he really has nothing that can stop him truly from getting to Pioran. Yep. So, the question is, will he learn the lesson that's kind of trying to be sort of described here, which is, you need to learn to that like judge and value relationships so that you're not just connecting with anyone that comes into your path, and then divesting your energy into just everyone now because right. you are a limitless fount of energy mm -hmm. um for, for the most part um, yeah fushi, that can be a that can be a hard lesson for fushi lesson to be to forced learn. to learn yep. because he can go a lot farther than a regular human could right w yeah which is why i think they're setting up basically that there will be encounters that fushi cannot solve on his own right aka the knocker here being one that he couldn't have beaten with the forms that he had because he wasn't using them that well. Mm -hmm. But also, there are people on this island that are like killers that are need to survive. They're yep. really good with weapons, and they can give you some ideas, some tips for survival. There's some a lot of things that you can learn here. Explosive arrows, you know? Yeah, 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 they've got gunpowder, dude. So, so like, there's a whole lot of things that can get from that. But then, if we're building up towards some kind of encounter slash fight with Hayase. Hayase could be that, basically, a, a, uh -huh. a, a threat that's something that is a, a little bit scarier because of there being maybe that human intelligence compared to right. uh, a knock. She knows what she's dealing with. Yeah. yeah. And also, it could be made a bit more personal, given that apparently mm -hmm. Perona's dead, um, yeah. which did feel like a very like on the nose meta awareness kind of exposition bit well it's a thing to confirm to us the question because we were confused we right. were like does this mean that she's dead because the only times we've had forms is that when they were dead right so we were like well she must be dead then but we have to leave that slight possibility mm. that this is a evolution on the power because we right. have no on-screen confirmation yeah that we have we have no one giving an actual rule of this is how it works the thing must be dead you know because like 
he's been able to make inanimate objects, for instance, you know, and, and things like that. So and those don't die. Those so. don't die, you know, but maybe it's they're already dead or whatever. I don't right. know. I, I but, think we, we should have maybe inferred based on the number of forms that he's taken thus far, like all of them. No, were. yeah, no, I, no, I get that the inference and it's like, oh, OK, then I guess Perona might be dead. But the fact that it was like said with such certainty felt like a like a looking up from the script and basically being like, well, the uh, the the rule that has not been truly discovered emphatically is, is now being said emphatically. Is now being said emphatically. And it's being and, said okay. by the the the, the being. Right, so right. it makes sense. So it's like, okay. But yeah, there were a couple things in this in this episode that just felt like that where yeah. I my immersion was broken by this arc. Yeah. So this is the thing that's really really frustrating is that sometimes I feel like there are stories where there are valid criticisms to be made about the story, but I just don't care because they're mostly nitpicks and they're things that if my immersion wasn't broken, I wouldn't care about them anyway. I just kind of write them off to being like, right. Okay. So try and stay immersed in them. I'm trying, and then my goal is to stay as immersed as deal. possible yeah. and mm -hmm. consume the story that the thing is trying yep. to give me here. Get all the good stuff that's in there. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and this story has lost that for me. And so yeah. things like the catapults holding the knocker there just yeah. hurt my brain because right. now I'm like, dang it, I'm trying to get re-immersed back in by the mm. idea that the knockers are back. And I'm like, okay, I, could, I could be excited about that's this. That's a direct conflict that's just, okay. Well, it's going to force Fushi to act, really. Right, yeah. But, yeah. but then the idea of, okay, everyone helps. I'm like, yes, that sounds good. Oh, the way that they help is they rope the arms... They, with nothing. They, they get they get siege engines that wouldn't make sense to exist. But I don't know how the ropes loop and wrap and tighten around mm -hmm. the arms. Okay, how they wield these siege engines and why are they got them and why they got them and you know and yeah, who cares that. about that? I just love the idea that they should have any kind of weight to where the mm -hmm. thing just couldn't go. And yeah, it's over. Like five or six people. Oh, we're going to hold down this twenty foot arm of stone. Right. Yeah. If we go by the logic that this thing is capable of moving all that stone there, then it actually does not have right a any reason as like, to why like, they should be able to. Stop what it. happened to the flesh Oniguma that went charging through trees and ripped up the land side? Well, I mean, this is stone, so no, no, I know. Nah, so I know. even more weight and heft to it than that. But you know, it, it's one of those things where where I, I feel like yeah. I feel like when. Like when the knockers were introduced, that felt very much like a um, okay. This is in a shonen jump, like this is this is a this is a shonen demographic story. Yeah. So we're going to put some action elements in there, even if that's maybe not what the mangaka is best experienced with. Be no. You know, because even if they are simple concepts, when people love them, it's because they're executed on really well. You know, and yeah. like like so, and then and then we get a tournament arc, and it's like okay, that's another one of those things where it's. You know, I feel like there wasn't that thought and care of why people love tournament arcs in general. No. Nope. And so it's, you know, yeah. 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 But, I mean, hey, if we can get really attached to Tanari, I think that a lot of this arc can be saved. Mm -hmm. I really feel like if you're going to go all in on Tanari being the, the primary perspective character and we're eventually going to attach some emotion to her, but maybe Gugu doesn't get her form because... Uh -huh he one doesn't let her die sure but two maybe he doesn't get that attached to her maybe he doesn't get that attached to her and then that's kind of like the lesson of the arc sort of yeah yeah one of and, the and and to be fair in the op mm -hmm. we've gone through all the transformations yeah that's in true that, in that little that's bit true. at the end there yep so perona being the last one means wait a minute right we, we still have a lot more of episodes a lot left more show, show yeah. so i would assume almost that either this arc is going to be cut short in like mm -hmm. two episodes or so or it's going to be an arc that will continue, but leave the prison island. Uh huh. And I'm like, whoa, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe there's something, maybe there's something unique that could happen here. Sure. Because I really yeah. don't see this arc going that long, super long, unless they leave. Uh, but if right. they leave, then that means that Fushi is probably going to leave Pioran here, or Fushi's going to start leaving, but he'll have a crew of people with him. Sure. He and then goes those and sails the grand line. Well, right, right. But, 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 but then those people can then be ones where he gets quieter moments with and sure. thus can get more attached yeah. to them so that we can then get emotionally attached to them. So I'm uh, like, oh, la Last thing see. that I want to want to say about this, and as a, as a way to basically sum up the, the reasons why I think it's hard for us to get attached to Tanari, mm -hmm. is that um, the emotions that Tanari expresses are completely dissonant with the environment that she's in. Mm -hmm. And and it's and because she's not an inherently like likable character like mm -hmm. like a like a fun character you know yeah. it ends up being something where I find it really hard to get attached because 
you know, giant monster attacks. And then she like pulls out a book and a pen and starts taking notes on it's like, like what it's supposed it's to be a comedy shtick. Right, or it's something. supposed to be like a comedy shtick, but I don't particularly find it funny, and it undercuts the tension of yeah. the knockers because the last time we saw the knockers before this, Goo Goo died. Yeah. So you know, like it's one of those things where I'm not, I'm not particularly interested in that kind of stuff happening, and 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 yet this could have been a moment where she's like, oh shit! Suddenly the facade gets dropped, and she's like, oh god, what's gonna happen? You know, please save me, you know, immortal person, right? right. And then that could be a way that I attach a lot more because then I can see the human side of her. But instead, it just feels like a like a like a stick figure, a talking head, a, a talking head doing things for writing purposes. You know, all random XD. Right, right, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. But all right, all right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access. You can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.